Bumblebees can survive underwater for up to a week. A chance event in the laboratory showed that hibernating bumblebee queens can survive underwater for up to a week. This ability suggests that these insects are more resistant than previously thought and can survive even a flood. The lead author of the study, Sabrina Rondeau, in a laboratory at the University of Guelph in Canada, studied pesticide residues in the soil and their effect on the queens of bumblebees of the species Bombus impatiens, which burrow underground for the winter. One day she was checking on the hibernating queens kept in test tubes prepared for them in the refrigerator and noticed that several queens had been flooded with water. I was a little scared. I was sure the queens were dead, Rondo admitted. To the scientist's surprise, all the queens in the test tubes survived inspiring Rondo to launch an experiment to test this trait. I have been studying bumblebees for a very long time. I talked to a lot of people about it and no one knew this was a possibility, Rondo explained. The results and description of the research were published in the journal, Biology Letters. At the end of summer, Bumblebee queens find burrows in the ground to spend the winter there. Depending on the species, they spend six to nine months underground. In response to environmental changes, mainly lack of resources and lower temperatures, they fall into the so-called dipause. It is a state of suspension of life activities, similar to hibernation. But spending so long underground comes with challenges, such as problems with parasites, mold and potential flooding. Rondo placed 143 hibernating bumblebee queens, bombus impatiens, in test tubes filled with soil that were flooded with water. Some of them were completely submerged, others floated on the water, and some acted as a control group and, wintered, without water. The period spent in the tubes was 8 hours, 24 hours or 7 days. The test tubes were placed in the refrigerator and dipause was induced artificially. The results of the study showed that 81% of the queens, 17 of 21, that were completely submerged survived. Survival rates were similar regardless of the duration of the experiment and the conditions to which the queens were subjected. In the control group, 88% survived. Bumblebees. Queens with higher body weight had a greater chance of survival. This is an extremely high survival rate and is not significantly different from survival when there is no water, Rondo admitted. This is probably due to the fact that anesthetized bumblebees slow down their metabolic rate, which means they need very little oxygen and can make do with the air stored in their bodies. It may also depend on the species, because the species Bombus impatiens, inhabiting North America, is considered to be particularly hardy and does not experience such population declines as other species. We wonder if flood resilience might be one of the reasons they're doing so well, Rondo said. We know that around a third of all bumblebee species are currently extinct. But this is not the case with Bombus impatiens, she added. 
The team considers this discovery to be good news, because it means that the species may have a better chance of surviving increasingly frequent floods related to climate change in the future. The famous Lucy was able to assume an upright posture, like modern people. Our 3.2 million year old ancestor could stand upright and move like modern humans do. Scientists reached these conclusions after modeling the muscular system of Australopithecines, the most famous representative of which is Lucy. The new discovery strengthens the consensus among researchers that Australopithecus afarensis walked upright, rather than using its hands to support itself like a chimpanzee. Australopithecus reconstructed pelvic and leg muscles also suggest it could have climbed trees. This means that the species probably developed in both the forests and grassy steppes of Africa. Lucy's muscles suggest she was bipedal like us, while probably being comfortable in trees, says Ashley Wiseman, a fellow at the MacDonald Institute for Archaeological Research at the University of Cambridge in the UK, who conducted the modeling. The results and description of the research were published in the journal, Royal Society Open Science. Lucy's fossils are the best preserved Australopithecus remains ever found. In the mid-1970s, 40% was recovered in Ethiopia. Her skeleton. The remains indicate that she was approximately 1 meter tall and weighed between 13 and 42 kilograms. The discovery also suggested that human ancestors could walk upright long before larger brains evolved. When creating the muscle model, scientists took into account the structure of modern humans. Our bone structure and muscle attachments may indicate how the muscles were arranged on Lucy's skeleton. Wiseman used digital modeling to recreate 36 muscles in each of Australopithecines' legs. The reconstruction shows that Lucy could straighten her knee and hip joints in a similar way to modern humans. This means that the species could stand and walk upright. The model also reveals the proportions of fat and muscle in Lucy's legs. It turns out that the legs of Australopithecines were much more muscular than those of modern humans and similar to those of bonobos, Panpaniscus. While the human thigh consists of approximately 50% from muscles, Lucy's was probably 74%. Some of the muscles in her calves and thighs took up twice as much space as those of modern humans. Lucy's knees had a wider range of motion than a human's. This, combined with its muscle mass, suggests that Aepharensis may have inhabited both dense forests and grassy savannas. Lucy probably moved in a way that we don't find in modern animals, says Wiseman. Although the discovery is based on an incomplete skeleton and it is unknown how often a Aepharensis assumed an upright posture, the results of the analysis strengthen the scientific consensus on Lucy's physical capabilities. Muscle reconstruction is a novel method to confirm bipedalism. It goes beyond the slightly simplified interpretations of paleontologists when it comes to inferring what movements characterized an extinct species, says Professor Fred Spall. 
researcher at the Natural History Museum in Great Britain. Muscle modeling has already helped scientists estimate T. rex's walking speed and may shed light on similar features in human ancestors. Pas de soleil, pas de soleil, pas de soleil.